so welcome everybody and thank you all very, very much for um, for your interest in this topic. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, just quick housekeeping, um, we're, we're recording the meetings. Uh, you've seen the agenda. Um, I put it in the Google groups. Um, and then uh, we, we will be, uh, you know, abiding by um, the FreeBSD code of conduct. So um, the link here, and I shared out the slides a couple of days ago. So if any of you aren't familiar with the code of conduct, hopefully you had a chance to take a look at it. I copied and pasted sort of the, you know, the key details um, as I see them anyway. Um, you know, let's just make sure we can disagree. We will disagree. That's part of open source. Um, but we should always make sure that we're being proactive, being friendly, being patient, being welcoming, considerate, respectful, and thinking about the words that we use. So um, let's just you know make sure that we kind of keep that in mind as we go here and just in general. Um, I won't belabor this because uh, I'm sure that I'm probably the least uh, I have probably have the least tenure with FreeBSD as anybody on this call, right? Um, I've been with the foundation only since April and I've been working sort of freelancing with the foundation for a handful of years. But one of the things that's really struck me as I've come into this role is just how broadly dependent upon and pervasive FreeBSD is. Um, so these are just some of the companies that use it. Uh, and and the reasons why they use it are you know listed here and there's more for sure um but uh but it really is i think a digital cornerstone uh in you know globally um which is very exciting to me personally and uh and i'm sure very rewarding to the community that has helped to build this technology uh you know you may not know much about the foundation, just very quickly, and then we're gonna get down to business. Um, so we're a 501c3, which has meaning in the US context, uh, because what it means is we're a public charity. So we're not a membership organization. Uh, we don't even have a concept of members. Um, we are 100% donation, uh, based, um, and uh, all we are here to do is support the development, the promotion, and the effective use of FreeBSD. That's it. Um, and the vast majority of the money that we get, regardless of where it comes from, whether it comes from individual donations or from corporate donations, the vast majority of that money goes into development, and you can see the effect of the effect of that development in this chart. So, Joe put this chart together for the Dev Summit in um, Ottawa that took place a few months ago. So, you know, almost a third of the sponsored commits to source um, are done by people who uh, either work at the foundation or are contracted. Um, by the foundation. So, you know, we, we take a lot of pride in that um, because at the end of the day, that's what we're here to do. And this is sort of the, the evidence of the work that we do. Uh, so, all right, the topic at hand is an enterprise working group. And again, I'm really incredibly gratified and very uh, grateful that um, so many people have expressed interest in this. So why are we even doing this? Well, um, uh, uh, Michael, um, and sorry, I'm just going to make sure I get your last name correct here. Osipov, did I say that right? I did. So Michael Osipov, um, uh, I had reached out to him with some questions, um, and he replied back with, uh, some, some really, really detailed feedback, uh, about his experience with using FreeBSD as a uh, general purpose enterprise server operating system. Um, so we got one more. Oh, cool, it's Andy. Um, so Andy is a, uh, well, 
member of the FreeBSD community and also a member of our board of directors. Hi, Andy, thanks for joining. Um, we've just gotten started. You haven't missed much. And just as a reminder, the um, this meeting is being recorded. So, um, uh, so anyway, Michael wrote back with very, very detailed uh, list of about eight items, eight or nine, um, where uh, FreeBSD is, you know, uh, kind of challenging for him to uh, in an enterprise context. And so what that really detailed feedback allowed us to do was sort of sit down and, and look at that and 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 look at sort of how that compared with the, the resources that we sort of have in the community or that we're aware of in the community. And um, and then sort of say, okay, well what what's our plan to move forward? And so so the plan uh, that that you know I kind of formulated and that I then consulted with uh, my colleagues at the foundation about and that we're moving forward with and that you all are are, are now part of um, is first is just to, okay, this is super helpful. Is there a critical mass of additional people uh, in the community who uh, are also interested in this, right? And and so I put the call out, I, I put it on Discord, um, we shared it on our social media channels, and I was really, really excited that we got about 40 people saying, yeah, like this is this is uh, valuable to me and I would like to help. Um, so great, like really, really excited, check. Um, the next thing is what we're gonna be doing on this call, which is kind of chartering this group. Um, so what are we going to focus on? How are we going to work? Um, you know, what are we hoping to achieve? Uh, and all of that sort of stuff. So I've got a slide on that uh, coming up. Um, then I think we start with the list that that Michael provided and, and say, okay, well, what else is there, right? And I've already added a few things based on, I did a Ask Me Anything on the FreeBSD Discord channel, and there was uh, some additional input on things that we might include. And so I've added those. And as we talk today, we should, you know, I want everybody to feel free to provide their thoughts on what else we should be including in this list. Um, and then what I'd like to do is prioritize. So I've already got a start to a Google poll. Uh, sorry, let me just admit, Tomic. Hey, Tomic, thanks for joining. Um, I've got to start to a Google uh, Google form, which once we've sort of added to the list, uh, I'll send that out and, and we'll prioritize, right? So it'll force us to rank. Then um, I think what we need to do, and this is super important, is say, okay, who can help with the priority areas? And you know, we don't necessarily have to, you know, start with one and then finish and then move to two. We can you know, if there are people who are willing to help and it's item number three, well, then, you know, let's start with that. But uh, but I think, you know, having an idea of what's most important to the most people and trying to assign resources and volunteers to those areas, um, you know, ideally will be a, a good way for us to move forward. And, and another way for us to think about prioritizing um, <clears throat> is there may be some low hanging fruit. There may be some that like maybe aren't necessarily the ones that are gonna have the biggest impact to the most people, but they're the ones that only require maybe a week or two weeks of work. So maybe these are ones that we can kind of knock off fairly quickly. Um, and that, and then I think, you know, there's nothing like progress to make any group feel good about the work that they're doing. So we should take the quick wins wherever we can get them. Um, and so that sort of gets us to the what uh, column, which is ideally, you know, over the remainder of this year, we can we can make some progress here, um, because I think that as we do that, and as I uh, sort of document the work that we're doing and publish it, um, that I think will will serve to uh, bring in more people, which is another thing that I'm hoping to achieve, which is a, a, a sort of active and growing number of people who are focused on this area. Let me pause there. Any any questions, comments? Okay. Um, sorry, I gotta click back on here. So, so who who are the forty people who who signed up? Right. So I asked all of you to kind of just say roughly what you do. Um, 
And uh, I was really excited about the mix of perspectives that we have. Um, so, you know, nearly 40% are, you know, the users that we are hoping to benefit this platform for, right? And, and that's awesome. We need that, right? Um, that's how we'll know whether we're doing it right or not, um, if we're making their lives better. Um, you know, in the other category, there's, you know, a whole lot of different uh, types of, um, you know, people doing different sorts of things, but all, I think, super valuable to the work that we're um, undertaking here. Uh, you know, we've got a, a good group of folks who identify as, you know, open source developers and maintainers, um, you know, some on the vendor side and some on the systems integrator side. So I think generally when I look at this, I, I think this is a super healthy mix of perspectives and I was really happy to see this. Um, okay, so this is where I'm hoping to, to take a little bit of a break um, from talking and have a sip of my, um, my seltzer water and hear from the rest of you. So what I'll what I'll do is pause now for a minute, give everyone uh, you know a couple of minutes to to read over this, and then in whatever way you're most comfortable, if that's writing a question or a comment in the chat or going off of mute and um, making a comment, I, I'd be very interested in uh, people's thoughts on this because ultimately. You know, this is the group of people that's going to be, you know, guiding, leading, doing this work. And so we should all be bought into and feel comfortable with uh, with this charter. Sorry, in, in the meantime, may I just introduce myself really quickly? Please. Um, yeah. Hi, um, so I'm uh, Sebastian. I'm a final year PhD, but I come from uh, not necessarily from a computational background, from a computer science background, but from uh, computational chemistry and bioinformatics. And I think I wrote to Greg or I wrote on the Discord channel whether FreeBSD would at some point um, be interested as a community to, since I think. Um, you know, there's a lot of networking development, maybe also into the domain of FPGAs. And I thought maybe we can build a pipeline uh, using FreeBSD in uh, drug development, like uh, drug development in silico pipeline. Maybe at some point compare it with the Linux uh, version. Um, and this is the first time I've joined a FreeBSD meeting. Uh -huh. so to be cool. here. And I just had to, yeah. Uh, oh, mention. thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We we did we we chatted on um on LinkedIn a little bit, Sebastian. Yes, and uh, and I actually have uh, I had a conversation earlier this week with somebody who is also in the scientific computing domain, who is interested in uh, connecting with others. So um, if you don't mind, uh, uh, like shoot me an email. Um, and I'm just making a note and I'll follow up. So if you don't shoot me an email, I'll follow up with you on this topic. Perfect, I will, I will. yeah. Cool. So, hello, if I, if I may. So uh, Please hi, do. I'm also in, in that world. I'm not a user, I'm an administrator at a supercomputer facility. Hmm. Um, and I'm also interested in, in, in free BSD and, and HPC, hmm. uh, mainly because of the stability. Uh, there are a few things missing. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why I joined this, this mm -hmm. group to see if, um, well, we can help or we can learn yeah. uh, things. So yeah, I also find it interesting in, in the HPC world. Sweet. That's wonderful. Um, yeah, this is, this is so great. Well, uh, <laughs> um, that, that is exactly one of the things that uh, I was speaking with this person about earlier this week, which is, at the infrastructure layer, FreeBSD is really unrivaled in its simplicity and its stability and performance. Things like user groups in in you know uh, ZFS dramatically simplify uh, you know 
better than uh, the corresponding Linux environment. But, <laughs> you know, there are, there is at the application layer, some gaps, right? So all the apps that you might ever want to run on Linux run on Linux, right? But you're stuck with this sort of very difficult to manage free kitten at the infrastructure layer that is just so time consuming, right? So if there was a way to get the best of both worlds and get like the stability and simplicity at the infrastructure layer from FreeBSD without having to sacrifice all of the, um, support at the application layer, that would be great. So um, it's really wonderful to know that you are both interested in that and I'll, I'll follow up and get us all connected because this is an active area of interest for sure. And I've got the recording to remind me. <laughs> um, cool, so what, what, what thoughts do people have about this, this charter? I know I didn't get it 100% right. Come on. There's got to be something I messed up. Wow. No ways. There's nothing that we can do to make this a little bit better for any of you. You really won't hurt my feelings if you're worried about that. I don't think you will be. You're open source people. Okay, well, um, you know, it's not I, sort of speaking, it's not speak now or forever hold your peace. Like, you know, I, you can I always email question. me. So yeah, one please. Question. In the yeah. success metrics, you mentioned yes. uh, bullet point number three, feature updates, uh, yes. also greater utility. Okay. So is, is there a list of um, ideas we can give? So for example, I'm sysadmin in, in, mm. the, in an HPC environment, and we do have certain enterprise needs like, uh, uh, LDAP, let's say, right? Yep. Um, you know, and, and for example, in Linux, you've got the 389 directory server, which is a bit more powerful, let's say, than than open LDAP, I, mm -hmm. I would say maybe. So that's, for example, one thing that, you know, a kind of enterprise feature. Yes. How is 389DS on free BSD? You know, that, that, that kind of tool. Um, yes. High-speed yeah. network, it works perfect. We all know the case of Netflix. So there's no yep. doubt it infinity band 100 gig 200 gig but yeah things like um yep. uh, directory services or or other maybe enterprise yeah. features yeah so is, is there yeah. a list here that we can uh, yep yeah that's the next away? slide so yeah okay. so yeah, okay. Sorry. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, yeah it's like i i swear we didn't plan this rafael <laughs> rafael's not my plant um <laughs> but that's a that's a good segue so let's 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 get into the next one so um so again, thanks to uh, to Michael for the the detailed documentation, and I've got a slide mm -hmm. on each of these that has a short description, and then we can have a discussion if there's any sort of people want. Oh, sorry, can, can I can I jump in quickly? Uh, yes, just a short one. So to to go on with the HPC story, with the you know the topics that you already started. I'm also yep. in computational chemistry. Oh, cool. uh, very recent, great. So I kind of connected with the, with the first guy who spoke. Sorry, I, I forgot the name. I didn't catch it. So uh, the, two days ago, three days ago, I actually installed OpenMPI, and it also installed Slurm as a dependency, and both ports are unmaintained, orphaned, uh, you know, uh, kind of dropped. So I wonder whether, you know, for all of these usages like HPC, uh, scientific computing, uh, numerical computing, whatever you want to call it, uh, things like MPI and the schedulers are kind yep. of the base. And if those ports are maintained, or let's say, you know, orphaned and they put this message out, it might get broken or whatever. It kind of, you know, doesn't even motivate you to get started on it with FreeBSD. And then you, when you want to install the next software, let's say Gronax or uh, Ember or uh, whatever, uh, you, you actually stop at the first step before you yep. even get started with the application software that you want to install. So I'm curious whether, you know, mm -hmm. such projects would also be added to the list, you know, the basic software for the, yeah. uh, for scientific computing. Yeah. I mean, well, it's funny that you mentioned Slurm because that was exactly the one that uh, the person I spoke to earlier this month, this uh, week mentioned, right? Was like, that's one of the key, the scheduler is like one of the key applications that right now is, uh, you know, 
needs improvement to to run on uh, you know for for people like you to run it with confidence on FreeBSD. So, um, so yes, like I don't know. I mean, I. I had not personally, and, and I'm not married to this, but I had not personally been thinking about scientific computing at HPC as exactly part of sort of enterprise. You know, when I think about enterprise, I think about, um, you know, you are uh, supporting general purpose kinds of, right? I've got a bunch of end users running Windows, maybe a few running Mac, I've got to worry about endpoint security. Um, I've got to support all of the Java applications that every one of my departments that I have to take care of is using today and all the ones that they're going to decide they need tomorrow, um, right? I've got to, and I've got to administer all my users. I've got to do all that kind of stuff, which is to me anyway, a little different from, from an HPC environment, um, scientific computing environment. Now, it's not to say that we can't like, take, you know, if everybody's more or less happy with sort of how we're thinking about the enterprise working group, literally copy and paste this over because we've already got several people on this call, plus the gentleman that I spoke with earlier this week who are like, I'm going to put a wiki together. I'm going to put a community together. I want to start getting conversations going with people who are also interested in this. You know, one of the things that is, is my job to do is, you know, uh, a kind of like collect input from the downstream users of FreeBSD, you know, try to sort of coordinate project manage so that we can make progress so that FreeBSD can be made better for them, right? So that's a lot of this activity. Part of this activity is also saying, okay, we've got a community of people. We've got a handful of folks who are willing to sort of donate their time to, to make progress against these very detailed specific requirements, which have been validated by the exact end users that we're hoping to uh, help, um, then where there are gaps between the volunteers and the amount of work that we need to get done, part of what I do is I go out and I try to uh, get secure um, funding from the industry, right? So that would be something that I would plan to do both here in the enterprise space, as well as if we were to sort of, you know, do the same kind of thing in an, in an HPC uh, kind of uh, area. Um, but yeah, like I'm not opposed to potentially combining and thinking about this as sort of enterprise plus HPC. But I see, I see Joe has his hand up. Um, Joe, go ahead. And then, um, and then Bertrand, if I, if I didn't address your question, please, you know, let no, me no. know. You did, thank you very much. All right, good. Yeah, you're welcome. Hey, so I'll just make a couple quick comments uh, about the HPC stuff. So there is a, a small community. So this is kind of a past life for me where we I, I was uh, doing computational biology and we ran a lot of our stuff on FreeBSD. Uh, mainly at the time, uh, ZFS was a big thing because we had data sets that were huge and, and it just made sense to run it with ZFS. Uh, so I will echo what some other people said, the situation on FreeBSD, um, in many ways can be great. The stability is at a fast at the time, uh, and the challenges were, uh, third-party software. You, so you can imagine when chemists and by bi especially biologists write software, it, it can be a challenge. <laughs> uh, but the good news was, is that a lot of it, a lot of this stuff, so uh, we did a lot of this microbiome stuff and we use these pipelines and a lot of it was written in Python. So if, if people like uh, in this small community, so I can think of uh, Jason Bacon, uh, me, Yuri, Viktorovich, if we port some of these, these applications where were often written in Python, the situation could be really good once they were ported. Um, uh, yeah, so I guess there, there is a community out there that's interested in this topic. Uh, so for Slurm, Slurm's a real challenge. So Jason Bacon and I took turns to maintaining that. And if you just, I think we took turns because we get kind of just exhausted with the changes that were coming from upstream. Like for example, 
uh, they started to rely more and more on, on Linuxisms like C groups um, and things like that. So it's it's a non-trivial amount of work to maintain Slurm. Um, so Jason talked about writing an alternative, much simpler scheduler. I'm not sure where that's at right now, uh, but maybe we can get something that's uh, more appropriate for FreeBSD than Slurm. Uh, otherwise, uh, whoever volunteers to take up Slurm, uh, it's going to be uh, a lot of work, I can tell you that. Um, well, a lot of work to get many of the features. Maybe I, I haven't visited in a long time, but you know, it might be a couple of days worth of work to just get it uh, back to where it was a, a few years ago when it was usable on FreeBSD. Uh, yeah, I think that's about all I have to say. Cool. Thank you, Ed, or I mean, Joe. Um, so, okay, so feature list. So this was what uh, what we received um, from, from Michael. Um, so I, I had, you know, we, we spent a good amount of time looking looking it over, looking at what had been done in each of these areas, thinking about these things. Um, and then uh, it, it seemed to us to sort of make sense to, to kind of split split it into two types. So the feature gaps on the left-hand side and then the infrastructure gaps on the right-hand side. Um, <clears throat> so infrastructure would be like, well, how do we do package? How do we do Poudrier? Is there a way for us to... Um, have some layers where like maybe you have sort of, uh, you know, a priority list of packages and we apply a more, uh, a more aggressive CI CD um, regime against those, for instance. Uh, um, you know, enterprise certificate authorities, it isn't so much that there, there aren't options in FreeBSD is that there isn't sort of a single preferred option. And so the reason why that's an infrastructure is because that's kind of an approach, right? FreeBSD has generally been a fairly, um, you know, I don't know, I don't want to misspeak. And if I do, I hope, you know, my colleagues will, will correct me or somebody else, but a you know, fairly unopinionated kind of approach to things. Um, uh, same goes for sort of like a definitive way to manage beehive um, and and you know other things like what's the recommended path so you know maybe that's something that could be solved through documentation for instance like maybe maybe the technical answer is out there it's just a matter of like consolidating that and saying you know this is sort of a way to do it um, so that's the infrastructure side on the features side right exactly to the point, Raphael, that you were making, like, you know, Active Directory support um, integration with DNS so that you don't, you know, it's really not feasible in a large scale enterprise environment to have to, you know, send emails every time you need to make a change to DNS when you have a user change. You need to have that integration, right? Um, uh, we're, we're hopeful that we would, you know, we feel, we have reason to be hopeful although we don't know what the time frame will be, that we will get a, a community contribution to the SMBFS 2.0, 3.0. So knock on wood, that would be a great one that we could sort of check off the list. Kerberos is a big topic, right? Something that clearly <clears throat> um, has, uh, you know, been, um, you know, an area of interest for quite some time. Um, so I've got, got some slides on that as well. Open JDK, obviously this is a must. Um, and, uh, and I'm, you know, thinking that this could be a potential candidate where I could at least go seek some industry support, right? Um, at a minimum, we would want to establish a stronger link with the upstream project to see what we can do there. Um, there has been some progress on Samba 4.x that we can talk about. And then cloud natives, cloud native just keeps coming up, right? I mean, it, it, it was like, it was, it was on Reddit again today. <laughs> um, you know, it's like dust need an OCI compatible runtime. This is what we need, right? Um, and uh, we are in, you know, violent agreement on that topic. We just need some people to help do the work. So, so without further ado, so anyway, I actually, this is a good time. So what else? So we've already heard Slurm um, uh, on the HPC side. Um, let's see. Okay, there's something in chat. Have a look. Uh, EBPF. Yeah. 
Yep, yep, I've heard that before. Um, any, any discussion? Yeah, I just uh, can add verbally that uh, a lot of stuff is going on uh, in eBPF world. Uh, mm -hmm. It's rather hot topic. Uh, yep. So, and this is something we miss in FreeBSD. Mm -hmm. And uh, while I still have a, a mic, I just want to to add. I am highly biased. Uh, we doing uh, just basically. Let me introduce uh, shortly. Yes. Uh, I am from Nginx and now we are part of a five uh, yeah. uh, and we do uh, Nginx yep. web server, load balancers and all this stuff and yep. we are highly present in the modern modern application stack. I'm yeah. highly biased by uh, our business, I know, I confirm that, but I would say in the same time that this small guy, cloud native, uh, Kubernetes ready, actually it's a big one probably bigger than everything else we have in this list. Mm -hmm. Maybe combined. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, really, <laughs> I really believe that. Uh, and yeah, from what we see actually, so this the lack of this stuff, cloud nativeness and uh, support for Kubernetes mm -hmm. actually makes FreeBSD non-relevant in a modern application stack. Mm -hmm. I know like this modern application stack sounds uh, very, mm -hmm. very, so it's a very marketing tool. Mm -hmm. But anyway, this is what we see. This is like mm -hmm. real data behind this marketing. And uh, yeah, so mm -hmm. there is no FreeBSD in this world, literally. Unfortunately, yeah. And unfortunately, I'm a big fan of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm done. Thank you. No, I appreciate that very much. I, I really do. Um, and, uh, you know, it's been something that 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 Ed and I and others have been talking about, like pretty much since I got here. And I don't, I don't know that anybody, you know, I I, I don't know enough to know like how important it is relative to the other ones on here. And I think that probably is a is subjective to who you are and what you do, right? Um, so and and I don't know that it necessarily matters, right? But 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 clearly. Uh, you know, A, um, you know, OCI compatible runtime for FreeBSD is vital, right? Really, really, really important. Um, Michael said as much in his initial feedback to us, um, you know, for the for the future relevance of FreeBSD, it's super important. Uh, but the other thing that, and the, the part that for me is, is super exciting is, is the really great opportunity right now because because the, of the standardization that's happening right um, with you know with the uh, you know with the open container initiative with the shift to container D right with all of these things happening um, you know with some really great work uh, that's that's already gone on to get us actually close right but we're not there yet for sure um, so anyway I I, I very much appreciate. Uh, the point, and I just want to make sure I get your name. Oh, Maxim. Yep. Thank you. And on that front, are people familiar with some of the the work going on there with the tool XC that can run OCI containers out of the registry, uh, FreeBSD or Linux containers directly on FreeBSD? It's the first I've heard of it. Okay. Uh, it's a tool developed by a, a FreeBSD developer, uh, and it allow you hmm. to just uh, for example, in the example I've seen, there's videos of it just spinning up the the Linux MariaDB um, container as a FreeBSD jail by just running the commands and pointing it at the the OCI registry. Hmm. Uh, and it's written in Rust, so it's very new. Cool. It might Thanks. be a good starting point. Yeah, that's that's great. Um... Thanks very and much, I think Alan. The only reason the Nginx one doesn't work is that the existing Nginx container defaults to wanting to use uh, IOU ring, which the FreeBSD Linux simulation mm -hmm. layer doesn't support. Cool. All right. And I see um, for anyone who's interested, Alan posted the link to the XC uh, repo in the chat. So um, check that out. And uh, I'll make sure to include that in the notes um, from this meeting. Raphael, please go ahead. 
Yeah, so um, one thing about this list, uh, Active Directory integration, OpenJDK and Kerberos are probably the number one enterprise thing. Um, so one question, uh, what about tools like Puppet, Sol, you know, Chef, Ansible, would that be under yep. the Puppets Automation rectangle or would it be uh, something that's, let's say, fully supportive? I don't know, Puppet is fully supported, but not Sol yeah. or because, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, great question. I mean, I, I I would sort of see that, yeah, more in the infrastructure side of things, kind of maybe like a split between ports automation slash definitive managers for, for Beehive and virtual machines. Um, you know, the, but, uh, but, you know, take your pick, like Ansible. I'm not as familiar with Puppet. There may be others on this call who are, but I can tell you for sure that Ansible and Salt are, are sort of, tested proven mm -hmm. solutions that provide you know production like i can tell you that they're in use in production providing config management for fleets of free bsd servers and i can add that puppet is as well it is okay uh, yeah cool. so yeah uh at clara we have customers using mostly salt uh and ansible but some using puppet as well in all three cases it's working very well. Cool. Sweet. And then so that, go ahead. two other, I don't know if tools, if they would be under feature infrastructure, they're a separate, would be uh -huh. uh, backup software and HA or load balancing, you know, that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. how how do you guys see that in, in your day-to-day mm -hmm. -day or 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 I don't know, how how's that uh, working? Yep. Uh that's a great question. And I mean, there's there are folks on this call far more uh, expert in both of those areas than I am. My sense, and then I'll let them talk, is those are those are pretty well covered, right? Like I think when you when it comes to things like backup and high availability, those are known strengths of FreeBSD. Um, you know, and there are a lot of options. Uh, but but I think the fact that you know you have a question about it means that there may be opportunities for us to improve the documentation. Um, so, you know, kind of like noted from my standpoint, but I don't know, Alan or Ed or Joe, is there anything you would add to that? Uh, mostly just load balancing tends to be somewhat application specific. Uh, so it's hard for FreeBSD to say, this is the load balancer you should use because it kind of depends on the application. Mm -hmm. But, you know, tools like Nginx, HAProxy, uh, and a bunch of other things like that exist. And then FreeBSD has things like CARP and UCARP to deal with you know, floating IP addresses and, and VRRP uh, and whatever else you might want. Great. Cool. Thanks, Raphael. Appreciate it. Um, all right. Well, again, not, not, a, not a speak now or forever hold your peace kind of thing, but, you know, everybody, like, you know, put a little reminder in your brain. Think about this. If there are things that haven't been brought up, and that aren't on this slide that you think this group should be considering, uh, yeah. you let me know. I think one that we've been looking at more lately is zero trust, especially around package building. Uh, so basically being able to build packages in uh, an air-gapped environment uh, and being able to ensure that, you know, the software that ends up running on air-gapped machines uh, has all the, the required provenance and that we know where all the pieces came from and that they're all the right pieces. Right. And we're right. not just trusting random mirrors out on the internet. Sounds 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 important and relevant to some uh, some current discussions and a lot of policy activity, frankly, that's happening in this in this regard where you know we're gonna have to attest to um that kind of thing yeah I, I would add to, to to the previous topic also reproducible builds uh i know that we support at least partially it uh, about uh, in the, in modern world especially in a, in a light of uh recent uh, supply chain attacks it's rather important okay you have something like that okay great thank you i guess one okay. related to that uh, mm -hmm. especially more in the case where somebody's building an appliance out of FreeBSD is the software bill of materials. 
uh, being able to to know mm -hmm. all the bits of software that are go into the appliance so that uh, you know those can be verified against known vulnerabilities and and so on. Yep. 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 For sure. Super. Oh, something in chat. Hi, it's me. Just about uh, S bomb. Yep. That Ellen mentioned. Yep. Got you. Cool. Uh, may I ask something, Greg? Please. So, um, I am working for a super microservice uh, uh, company, and, um, and now it's very popular uh, uh, GPU server um, uh, with NVIDIA and US and uh, networking. How are we standing with the driver? Uh, yeah, with G GPU uh, drivers AI and uh, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of a lot of requests for uh, testing for the POCs I have, and uh, I would love I would love to start with a uh, free BSD, and I'm going to as soon as we get the new GPUs from the Nvidia, and we are the only one for now who will test. Uh, those GPUs, which will be good, there are lots of customers asking. Mm -hmm. Storage is performing well with the ZFS, but people are still choosing Ubuntu and uh, 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 ZFS instead of uh, FreeBSD. So um, I'm trying to, to, to do this, and uh, especially with the drivers, I have uh, some problem with the new uh, networking card uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, FreeBSD is involved with the Melanox, which is awesome. Because Melanox is uh, uh, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's very popular and it's, it's doing pretty good. And only standing with the GPU server is now is uh, like a crazy for workloads, AI, and stuff like that. So this is yeah. Th thank you. So um, it, I'm sorry. Could I, I was try I was trying to figure out who who was speaking. Could do you mind just give me your name because I'd like to make sure that I can follow up with you. Uh, Zor, I mean, Zoran. Uh, oh, Zoran. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. We, we emailed earlier. Great. Thank you. Um, well, well, first, thank you very much for, um, for the testing that you're doing. Uh, and that, that's, I want to make sure that, that we connect with you because we want to make sure that we're supporting you, uh, as much as we possibly can, um, with that, uh, as far as the, um, the, the GPU drivers, uh, that is that is definitely uh, an area that we are uh, working on. Um, I I can't say that I have like a, a specific update for you right now, but we we'd certainly uh, like one of the things that I'm doing on a regular basis is um, you know reaching out to uh, chip makers to um, and we we have active ongoing relationships with several of them where we are um, collaborating to make sure that uh, there is support on a rolling basis for FreeBSD on their new uh, new chips. Um, and part of what I'm doing is, you know, trying to <laughs> increase that yeah, uh, and, and uh, expand it to more to more people. Sure, more keep in makers. mind, uh, I'm ready to test if you have yeah. anything. Yeah. I have hands on on every I, every new supermicro GPU, SSG, mainstream cloud DC. I have a twins, which is very good for um, uh, for K8 and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. for everything, uh, I'm using it. I'm using it in my mainstream uh, free BSD now by myself, and I have a given customer access for DFS. But in case that we have any kind of drivers and stuff, which is yep. GPU is honestly, it's uh, incredibly popular and I'm not standing that well, it's so advanced. So I'm just uh, mentioning this, I'm not kind of mm -hmm. expert for, for that. I cannot say so because mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy. Uh, all of a sudden it became really popular. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it really has. Um, cool, well, let me, let me make sure, I'll follow up with you. Uh, Zorn, and we'll continue this conversation because it's definitely an important one for us. Uh, thanks again. Um, sure, no problem. All right. Well, 
we have got uh, 12 minutes left as a group. Um, I've, uh, I'm not going to like update the slides in real time because I don't want to, you know, I want to make sure that we're using everybody's time well, but I will update the slides based on the conversation that we've had. Um, what, uh, what I'd like to try to do quickly in the next few minutes, not, not read these uh, and, and not necessarily, you know, to, to fill them in, um, but uh, what, oh, let me just check, take a look at chat real quick. Um, I think yeah. for this one, I'll just ask if we can get more clarity about what functionality is is missing. Uh, you know, my, mm -hmm. my use cases have mostly been around storage. So I've done Active Directory integration where, you know, the the previous theme machine can see the users of groups and, and have ACLs on the files that are integrated with Active Directory so that you can, you know, control the permissions on the files from Windows and, and have it mm -hmm. assigned to the your, you know, organizational units and groups and, and all that, uh, but interested in what other pieces are missing there. Uh, as far as, you know, they mentioned dynamic DNS updates, obviously, but like, are there other bits of integration that are missing that maybe we can yeah, specifically I mean, identify? Sure. I mean, Michael, I don't know if you feel comfortable sort of chiming in. Um, <clears throat> This point is quite, uh, oh, it's like lightweight from my point of view. I'm most not, really not focusing on, on user and groups integration. This is a completely different topic. I know there is SSSD, but uh, this is only solely about joining interactive directory and the DNS updates, nothing more at the moment, uh, which can at the moment only achieve by ports. Uh, but um, with uh, Unbound in base, some of the work which is required to do the Active Directory integration can be done with base with a few changes in C code. Uh, maybe this can be reused um, and uh, improved in the future in base to reduce uh, uh, the amount of ports we need to install to make the machine work inside Active Directory. Okay. I'm better grasp of what you're looking for now. Mm -hmm. I think um, given the, this has been a wonderful discussion. I think given the, the time, what I'll probably do is um, when I send out the, the, the follow-up Google form where we will prioritize some of these, well, maybe I'll do it in, maybe I'll do it in phases. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll uh, first do a, a Google poll, a Google form where we assess difficulty and effort no, I'll probably do it in one. Sorry, um, apologies. Uh, I think we'll we'll just do a single Google form where we'll ask this group to, uh, you know, kind of remark on the difficulty, the amount of effort, and the importance, right? And then we'll use that to prioritize um, when we when we get together in the next meeting. Um, so uh, I think this one's fairly straightforward, right? Um, you know the the SMBFS driver in uh, uh, in kernel right now is out of date, and we need to get it updated. Um, and like I said, we are pursuing an option to have that donated, and uh, are hopeful that that will come through. Any any questions, comments on this one? Okay. So uh, Kerberos, the the Heimdall base is 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 old, um, although there has been quite a Good amount of work going on in here, uh, but it uh, you know there are some challenges with OpenSSL three. Um, so one of the suggestions too was maybe there's a way that we can split uh, the MIT Kerberos port into client and server, the way um, various Linux distros do. That that might ease some of the consumption of of this and use of this capability downstream. Yeah, maybe it's kind of related to the last sentence in the, the update column, but one that we've been looking at is can more of the ports in the ports tree have a, a flavor where Kerberos is actually enabled uh, so that there's an official package of it rather than having to build your own custom packages if you want, you know, sudo to have support for Kerberos or uh, LDAP and things like that. 
uh, you know, it's off by default in most of the ports, uh, yep. and that that maybe makes sense. But can we get an official flavor that has these very common enterprise features like Kerberos and LDAP enabled, mm -hmm. uh, so that fewer people have to deal with building their own packages? Cool. That uh, that sounds like an awesome suggestion. So I'll make sure that that is captured in the in the notes, and that you know when we. When we come around to you know sort of working on this um that we that you know that we we, we have that as an option this actually applies to a lot of ports but not yes. just uh, those uh, mentioned if you don't want to build your own ports mm -hmm. yeah. cool uh, uh related just one more thing about kerbos that's uh related to this um there was a really informative discussion a while back. I can't remember, maybe like a year ago. Unfortunately, it was on the developers list, uh, but it was about switching base to MIT Kerberos. And in general, I think all the comments were either favorable, favorable or neutral. Uh, there was one uh, person that was a little bit against it. Um, who was on cluster admin and I recently brought this up with cluster admin and uh, there seems to be less of uh, less issues with with this change so we're kind of exploring that with somebody now and I know uh, a lot of these problems or some of these problems might go away with MIT Kerberos so that's just a, a heads up that that's something that we're discussing with somebody that's done a lot of the work on Kerberos. And you know, if OpenSSL three is a forcing function for that, then that gets over the last objections. Hmm. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Uh, let's see, so I think this one again is fairly straightforward. Um, you know, not not easy, but but it's simple. I don't know that. Uh, but happy to have any discussion on this. If there's anybody who has any thoughts, questions, clarifications? Uh, it's on my to-do list to put out a proposal for somebody to to take a look at uh, Open GDK, Open GDK, JDK, and uh, and see if they can make some progress there. Oh, uh, that's great. Thanks, Joe. And and I'm you know, I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth, but I'm sure there are probably you know a few folks on this call who would be more than happy to to have a look at that before you send it out. Um, if you would, if that would be helpful to you, Joe. Um, but that's that's really wonderful to hear. Certainly would be helpful. More eyes to look at these things before they go out would be helpful. Okay, fantastic. Uh, so Samba 4.x, there has been work going on in this area. Um, so. Um, Yeah, I can add uh, there's one additional thing. Uh, my company, Clara, is currently working on a special Samba module that will go into upstream Samba to allow it to take special advantage of some ZFS features, in particular, the new block reference tree feature that came in. Mm -hmm. So if you ask Samba to copy a file from one share to another share, it can use the underlying ZFS feature to do that without actually copying data like without having to write the data a second time. So it will save space and make the server-side copying much faster, similar to uh, kind of related work that happened for VMware uh, at IX Systems in the past. OK, fantastic. Thanks. Thanks, Alan. Um, Michael, uh, you know, don't don't feel obliged to, to respond right now, but I would be I would be interested in some point in, in your thoughts on, you know, to what extent that that will help you. Um, uh, you know, with with your with your issues, or if there would be additional things that you would like to see happen, um, you know, in addition to that great work that Alan just referenced. Yeah, I, I think just a note. First and foremost, I'm always looking for upstream support and reducing the custom patches we have in a port tree, uh, and uh, hearing from the upstream developers. Yes, of course, we'll accept your your patches and we'll keep it in the tree and we'll continue upstreaming your patches and support FreeBSD as we support something else uh, mainstream. This is mm -hmm. my first and foremost uh, wish. 
Yep. Now, I think yep. the area that Project has the most success with that is if we can get FreeBSD uh, workers in their CI system so that, right. you know, as they commit stuff, they get told that, hey, that broke yep. something on FreeBSD or Correct. whatever, yep. or they can maintain Agreed. it. And, Agreed. you know, that means we have to keep it working, uh, which is, you know, been a bit of a struggle on the ZFS side. Okay, great. Um, thank you. Thank you both very much. Uh, so there's been some discussion in the chat on this. We, we had a conversation about it earlier. Um, you know, uh, I think there are, there are some different ways that this could be done, right? Um, and so, you know, uh, people much smarter than I, you know, We'll, we'll need to sort of work that out and hash that out, but it certainly sounds like there's interest. We know that there's been some progress in different areas and different ways of doing this. So, uh, yeah, I don't know how much more there is to say about this one, but anybody who wants to chime in, please feel free. Hey, Greg, uh, let me just uh, send you a note offline uh, on this topic. That'd be wonderful. Just, just, just don't want to waste uh, everyone's time right now. Okay. Thank you, Maxim. That would be really helpful. Appreciate it. Um, okay. So that, those, are the, those are the features. And now we're going to kind of get into the, um, the infrastructure. But I'm, I'm cognizant of time. We like literally one minute. So I guess um, what I... What I think makes sense is uh, let's let's talk about next steps. So uh, I'm going to go through the recording. I'm going to go through my my uh, notes. Um, I will uh, put together minutes from this meeting and send them out on the Google group. Uh, I will also uh, update the slides. Um, <clears throat> then uh, I'm going to push out the poll um, that will ask you to uh, prioritize these different items that we've identified. Um, you know, it doesn't mean that we have to go by exactly what that is, but at least it'll give us a sense of, as a group, this is what people feel are the most, the most important and also the ones that have the highest and lowest degree of difficulty, et cetera. Um, uh, I'll also uh, ask for everybody to provide their availability I think we're looking at you know early September probably to get back together, um, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, and um, yeah, and then you know I think really at that point what we're going to want to try to do is is um, you know see how we can make progress as a community against some of these things, see where there are gaps, where there are things that we really want to get done but we just don't have people available who can uh, work on it, and that'll be my cue to then. Um, start to see what I can do to uh, find resources out in the industry that can support some of this work. Um, let's see. I guess before we close, we're we're a minute over, and I do apologize for that. But does anybody have any uh, comments yeah. that they want to make I just, before we uh, wrap up? Yeah, may I just ask: uh, uh, Is there going to be a channel on Discord as well with which we can keep up? The progress, or um, huh? on the on the talk, or or just the mailing lists. Well, um, yeah, I mean, I I um I don't have a I don't have any objection to to creating a, a channel on Discord. Um, I can certainly ask uh, Vince. I'm not an administrator, so I don't have the ability to create one. But I can certainly ask Vince if he'd be open to that, and and that would be perfectly fine with me. If you know, if if folks would would like that. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Any other questions or comments or suggestions? Uh, one thing on the enterprise here, this is an ongoing test now open for quite some time and Kyle Evans and me worked on this. And I would like to conclude this finally with Kyle. Uh, there are a few open issues in Bugzilla uh, which haven't been reviewed for quite some time by anyone who is able to commit. Maybe this is something we can really resort in the next couple of weeks and to get to the mm -hmm. uh, harder stuff. Yeah. Um, so what what would be an efficient way for us to um, make sure that we don't lose track of that? 
uh, Michael? Um, get in touch with Kyle and figure out whether he's still interested to complete this task. If not, um, talk to someone else who would be willing okay. to work with me, uh, who has commit bits uh, okay. and source and ports and uh, figure out what needs to be done uh, to make this complete. Cool. Um, okay. Um, maybe I tell you what, I'll, I'll circle back with uh, Joe and Ed on that. And if I have, or if we have additional questions on that, um, I'll, I'll reach out to you, Michael. Thanks. Yeah. Anything else? All right. Um, well, thanks everybody very, very much for taking the time. I really enjoyed uh, talking to all of you and uh, look forward to working with you more on, on this and you know maybe other areas as well. It's a really great discussion. Thank you, Greg. Thank yeah, you. You're, you're, you're more you're more than welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thanks, Rafael. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Spike. Cheers.